This week on CrossFeed. Which sexual sin is worse? Rebranding the church. Thank Jesus for permission to thank Jesus. Praise the Lord and lock and load. And are private schools a breeding ground for abortion? Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa, and pastor-elect of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. Hey, I'm Pastor Jim Butler, still pastor in St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Tedham, Massachusetts. Uh, that hasn't changed, and it won't till I retire. <laughs> you know, that's what I said when I came here. <laughs> You never know. <laughs> I, I I do know. God has the God has made it very clear to me. This is where I'm staying. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm nuts. I'm living out of box and stuff. It's crazy. I'm surrounded by boxes. You can't see them. Well, actually, you probably see the little um, kind of corner boxes in the corner here. Well, mm -hmm. that probably doesn't show up on the on the final recording, but. Yeah, we're we're kind of at this point. We're just sort of anxious to be done with it, you know. So, yep, uh, it's a hassle. Get off there and, and 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 finish things up and move on. And yep, it is. That's that's why I'm not leaving. A, that's why I'm not moving again. <laughs> so, um, speaking of of uh, packing and, and moving and all that kind of stuff, uh, since next week is uh, Father's Day and and I'm going to be busy Thursday night. Um, then we're getting real close to the move. I'm thinking this is probably our last episode, uh, before the move. So the next episode will probably be, uh, sometime after the 12th, um, probably like that following weekend, um, in July. So, um, going to take about a month off. To, so that I can finish getting moved and stuff and um, get get kind of settled in and set up over there and that. and um, So at, there's a possibility if, if we really uh, end up getting a lot of packing done and, and we're kind of ahead of schedule, uh, you know, to do one like around the end of June, but not likely. So. Oh, Okay. And this one's going to be short because with this week we're starting to record this late because I was at an ordination installation at my last parish today and came back on the Mass Pike and hit some really bad traffic and then hit some more bad traffic at 128. So we're running this a little bit late tonight. Uh, where should we begin? Um, well, speaking of uh, churches, um, let's uh, take a look at what the uh, mainline churches are doing uh, as uh, to fight their shrinking membership. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and actually, it's interesting. It uh, they have this talks about this ad um, by the United Methodist Church. Uh, what if a church wasn't just a building but thousands of doors? And I've actually seen this ad in Newsweek. Have you? I don't know yeah, Newsweek. Seen, so <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I'm not going to be much longer, but uh, um, they they change it, and I like the change. So, but uh, um, you know, but. So this is by the United Methodist. The ELCA has started a new um, uh, advertising campaign as well. Uh, you know, the United Methodist says, you know, the membership has dropped 25 percent uh, since they became the United Methodist Church since their merger. So um, uh, it's pouring $20 million into a new marketing campaign, including a website, television advertisements, um, also pay, uh, uh, print advertisements. And even street teams in some, some cities to rebrand the church from stale destination to a 24-7 experience. Now, you know, if they're talking about sort of the – want to send the message that you know, being a member of a particular church or, or being a Christian, you know, for that matter, um, is, is part of your life and not just a hour a week kind of deal, then that's – that's great. So okay. the the ELCA has been um, they're they're emphasizing the church's charitable work, and uh, 
Episcopal Church has recently launched a website called I'm an Episcopalian, and uh, they have people uploading videos explaining their faith, which is kind of a cool thing. I, you know, I, I, I like the idea of the sort of living out your faith. You know, I've talked about this sort of life integration or vocation, we call it, um, where you see your faith as more than just uh, something that that you do in our week. And so I think I think that's great. I, I'm I'm much happier with these uh, sort of uh, publicity programs than like what the UCC has been doing with um, all their sort of you know, well if you're gay we'll take you in and you know and that kind of stuff. So this is I mean this is about living out your faith. My concern with this. And, I, you know, I don't have a problem with wanting to, you know, say, hey, you know, come check us out. Um, and, and maybe it's just the, the slant of the article, um, the, the, sole, the sort of focus on numbers um, that, oh, well, we're, we're shrinking, so we need to build up our numbers. Okay, well, you know, if it becomes all about the numbers, then you're kind of missing the point. And, and I'm not saying that that's it, that, you know, it's just kind of how it comes across, but that's not necessarily you know, what they're doing. And, and in fact, this, um, having the Episcopalians upload their videos explaining their faith, you know, that, that really doesn't seem like it's about numbers. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, that's a danger that a lot of churches, a danger a lot of local churches fall into, you know, oh, pastor, you know, our numbers have been going down, you know, what are you, what are you doing wrong? <laughs> you know? So I'm running them off for a chance, I guess. Uh, <laughs> the reality is, though. Sorry about the mess. Because you mentioned local church. Print ads, websites, yada, 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 aren't going to help the church grow. There is, I have come to the conclusion that there is almost nothing a denomination as a denomination, you know, the headquarters, whatever, can do to help the denomination grow. It's all about what's going on in the local church. If the local church isn't reaching out, local church isn't doing mission and ministry. There's, there's nothing they can do. Like they can come up with the best advertising campaign in the world, but if people walk into, you know, are are intrigued enough to walk into the church building, and you know, yeah, if there's nothing there's going on, nothing going on. There's 15 people there, or it, the, you know, happened to me one time. I walked to a, a a Lutheran church. Nobody said a word to me. Yeah, yeah, well, guess what? Actually, I had a friend of mine, I know I've told this story before, that visited a church in Michigan. The only person who talked to him in the church was another visitor. Um, <laughs> you know, so there's nothing that can be done. I mean, that's just the problem. And uh, that's just that's just what it's all about. Um, I, I know and, a guy that he was, he was visiting. Uh, it was in the same community, but he just decided, yeah, I'm just going to go visit a different church this week. And so he goes there, there's a couple guys, you know, standing outside that hadn't gone in yet. And he says, hey, is it all right if I worship with you today? And one of the guys says, uh, I'll have to check. <laughs> he says, never mind. And he just turned and walked away and never went back. Don't say I'll have to check. The correct answer is, yes, we'd love to have you worship with us today. Right. Um, well, there is a place, um, uh, well, I hear in, in Dedham. The uh, Methodist church has about 20 people in it, and they're getting ready to move out of their church building into where their nursery is, and they're trying to they're going to start trying to sell their church building immediately. Um, and I mean that's just, you know, it's sad but true. And uh, you know, the United Methodist ads not going to help that. Nope. You know, and there's one other thing in this article. Um, it said many young people are more likely to volunteer through college organizations or groups like Habitat for Humanity than by joining a new church. Um, and they said that study after study has shown that religions that grow are the ones that are hardcore in some way. They have something that differs sharply from the culture in which they operate. That's the problem with mainline Protestantism. It's not different enough from mainstream America. All right. There you go. I mean, you know, you, you go to, to a mainline Protestant church and you're going to hear, um, you know, pro-homosexual messages. You're going to hear, um, you know, just a, a lot of other 
messages where they're not really going to talk a lot about sin, uh, especially they're not going to talk a lot about the forgiveness of sins. And you know what? You're completely missing the point if you're not telling people about forgiveness. You know, it, so yeah, it, this is what the church has to offer. We have the gospel. We have the good news of salvation by grace through, you know, through Christ's merits instead of our own. And if you're not giving people that, then you have nothing else to offer that they can't get somewhere else. You, you got an entertaining, you know, energetic church with lots of great music. Guess what? They can turn on MTV and get that. All right. If you've got a, you know, you got a lot of great uh, social ministry kind of things going on, they can go to Habitat for Humanity. They can go to the local soup kitchen, you know, or, or whatever their particular brand of service that they'd like to do. That's all available too. So, you know, what churches have to offer is the gospel. And if you're not offering that, and if it's not the core of everything that you do, you're completely missing the point. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But speaking of preaching on gays and gay marriage and all that kind of stuff, uh, we have this really great article. Um, it's a really, it's a blog post um, from the Jerusalem post. And, um, now we talked about, and we pronounced it wrong. It, it's Carrie uh, Prejean, not Prejean, um, the uh, Miss California or former Miss California. She was fired now, but it wasn't because of her uh, political anything. It was because she wasn't showing up for work. <laughs> she was so busy um, doing all this, uh, all this sort of um, anti same sex marriage uh, activism stuff that she wasn't showing up for her Miss California stuff. But that's their story. Her story is still different. She was on the Today Show the other day, and she's like, like, you know, I dare him. I double dog dare him to name me ten things that I didn't show up for. He says tens and tens and tens, but he doesn't name one. No. Most jobs, it it only takes a couple that you just no. don't show for. <laughs> I just, just, just. But she's she's like name one. Don't say a lot of them. Just name name one. You know, she's, I was just the opposite. I was I was you know begging, saying I'm going to go to the special Olympics. I want to do this. But that's beside the point. Um, <coughs> but basically, what this guy is arguing in this is that okay, in dealing with this whole thing, um, you know, uh, the real issue is what is the bigger threat to heterosexual marriage today: gay marriage or porn? Uh- yeah. Uh, when a wife waits alone in bed for her husband who's downloading pictures of naked women on his laptop, do you really believe she consoles herself by thinking, well, at least those gays can't marry? Um, and, uh, um, yeah, for all my Christian brothers and sisters who scapegoat gays for undermining the institution of marriage, I would remind them that we straight people have done a mighty fine job of destroying it ourselves. Um, and that's absolutely the truth. I mm-hmm. mean, uh, you know, that goes back to, of course, to 1965, and um, what was his name? Uh, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, his famous uh, uh, paper that he wrote, in which he talked about the destruction of the black family. You know, and, and, and the uh, 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 out-of-birth wedlock, out-of-marriage, uh, um, out-of-wedlock birth yeah. rate among the blacks. Um, and I can't remember what the percentage was because this continues. This, the, the black family will be destroyed. And, of course, that's that's basically happened. And now it's crossed, crossed over the white population. And, uh, and then the other is the other problem of, um, of uh, um, dealing with pornography. And, uh, that, you know, again, something else that has just ruined people and ruined sexuality in America. Yep. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's just. It's done so much damage. People think, oh, it's just pictures or, or whatever. It's just, you know, it, it's that it's all innocent. And you know, for one, it 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 creates uh, unrealistic ideals. You know, it's the whole. Just even looking at a, a regular magazine, um, you know, where they airbrush the person and they Photoshop them and everything, and you know, to to create. And you've heard talking about uh, teenage girls and and older girls that. Um, 
women thinking that that mm-hmm. they should be able to look like that when the person the picture you're looking at the person doesn't really look like that in real life you know it's a photoshop job but right. um you know and this guy's saying look why is this woman this big champion of marriage when she's part of the problem you know here she got you know she has breast implants she has posed topless you know, she's part of the problem. You know, how many wives really want their husbands watching this woman parading around in her underwear? I think you know what the problem is just as well as how I How many men want to watch her parade around in her underwear? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm an exception to this thing because I just, I, I don't know. It's just, it's it's never, it, it just doesn't interest me. I, I, I hate beauty pageants. But, um... I haven't looked at a beauty pageant in, in, in absolute years, but, uh, you know, um, but still, it, it's the, the, the yeah, you know, again, how much money is spent on, how much, you know, all this goes on, right? It, it, is this really what the whole thing is? It's all about. Uh, we saw another part of that just this week um, with uh, the David Letterman jokes about uh, Palin's daughters. You know, she got knocked up by a rod in the in the seventh inning, and you know, and uh, Elliot Spitzer was sitting close to her. You know, and again, that's that's being disrespectful and insulting of women. Hey, to to to, to joke as he did earlier, you know, that uh, Sarah Palin was uh, taking a helicopter ride around Manhattan and was using her shotgun to shoot the rats. Um, that's funny. Okay, she's a public figure. She's the you know, but you don't do it about the kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're they're supposed to be private, not head. And especially, you know, 17, 18, 14, 15, 14, 18 year old girls, even if they have made their mistakes. Uh, but it's, you know, it's that whole idea, which, uh, uh, you know, and, and then, uh, yeah, I, I liked it. His other comment, by the way, is as for the guys, well, it seems the only ones who still want to get married are gay. You know, uh, the straight guys are building brilliant excuses not to wed girlfriends who they have lived with for years or even have children. And that's exactly the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, which is one of the reasons why the whole institution of marriage is so important. It's because, uh, but, but, you know, it's, it's the idea that it, it helps the male population to settle down a little bit. Boy, no control. Yeah. You know, guys, if you're not married, and you're sleeping with a woman, all right, make a decision, all right? Either knock it off or get married. Decide, am I ready to, am I going to make this commitment? I'm going to stay with this woman for the rest of my life. Then marry her already, all right? Do it right. And it's just, it, it, this. you know what this, this is? The number one, and I, I can't, I haven't looked up the statistic, but I heard this while I was working at the library at the seminary. The number one book stolen by, um, it, from libraries is the Bible, right? Which is just kind of goofy because, um, you know, you can get them for free. They're handing them out on street corners and, you know, you walk into any church and, and the pastor will give you a Bible if he asks for one. I, I would hope, you know, I certainly would. And so, um, you know, you're you're stealing something you can get for free, all right? Mm-hmm. Well, when you are in a relationship, in a sexual relationship with someone um, who, if you know, you should be, whom you're not married to, again, you're stealing something that you can get for free. You know, if this is something that is offered to you, if if someone is is offering. Um, their body to you, and this goes men or women. You know, it goes both ways. Um, the that if they're offering themselves to you, then you know, <laughs> we you know we use the expression "go all the way." I'm sorry, but that's not going all the way. That's only going halfway. <laughs> going all the way is getting married first. You know, hmm. that's all the way, and so go all the way. Well, I think part of the problem, though, is again that the women allow it. Now, that's, yeah. That was one thing that the women who have put, and, and historically, women have had to impose morality on men. Uh, but if women don't do that, if women don't show respect to themselves, you know, and say no, I won't, 
you know, or, you know, marriage is going to be the thing that, you know, you want, you know, then that's going to be the problem. He even brings it up. We can save marriage in America and get men to become gentlemen who treat women like ladies. But that must be accompanied by women not only demanding male respect, but by respecting themselves as well. Yep. Ladies don't settle for second best. All right. If he really loves you, then he will respect you and he will not make demands on you that are not um, his right to demand. And that's all there is to it. So, but I thought the rabbi had a good article there. Yeah, excellent, excellent article. Uh, where do we go from here? Oh, well, let's deal, let's deal with the gun-loving preacher. Okay. Yeah, okay, so so she's pregnant, so it's a shotgun marriage, okay? You know. <laughs> there you go. There's a chance. Only time I've known about having guns in church, but... Uh, Golly, I, I love the title of this. Gun loving pastor to his flock. Peace be with you. P I E C. All right, this is uh, uh, Pastor Ken Pagano, pastor of New Bethel Church in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, he is encouraging his members uh, to, they're going to celebrate the upcoming theme of the birth of the nation, you know, 4th of July coming up. And, uh, and the there, Second Amendment. Yes. Uh, uh, responsive, welcoming responsible handgun owners to wear their firearms inside the church June 27th. Why they're not doing it? The, oh, th- and this is a Saturday. Uh, but uh, so there's going to be a handgun raffle, patriotic music, and information on gun safety. So, uh, <laughs> I, Okay, so so here's my question. You know, there he says the the point's not to mix worship with guns, though he may reference some passages from the Bible. There's passages about guns in the Bible. <laughs> I don't remember those, <laughs> given that the gun wasn't invented yet. <laughs> I don't know slingshots, you know, David and Goliath, something, yeah. You know. Some trust in chariots, some trust in Colt 45s, but we remember the name of the Lord our God. You know, I, I look at this and, and, you know, they talk about gimmicks to get people into church and, and stuff like that. And, you know, they also mentioned uh, Arkansas Pastor John Phillip, who was shot twice uh, while leading a service in his church. Um, he says, House of Worship is no place for firearms. A church is designated as a safe haven, it's a place of worship. Um, it's unconscionable to me to think that a church would be a place that you would even want to bring a weapon. Right. Now, it, it is, by the way, that all the weapons that are brought to this gun for the, you know, blessing or whatever it is, are have to be unloaded, and there would be a security form to ch- check at the yeah. door that your gun is unloaded. So really, it's it's all about celebrating, you know, the um, the 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 Second Amendment and you know the right to bear arms and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? It's not a biblical thing. I'm not saying it's it goes against the Bible, but it's not, you know, there's, the right to bear arms is not in the Bible, it's in the U.S. Constitution. It is, that's why I carry a big gun. So while I, you know, I guess I, I'd be a little nervous and I think it would be a little distracting to have a bunch of people um, carrying, you know, openly carrying weapons into church, uh, even if they're, if, if I know they're not loaded. Um, and you know, in Kentucky, you're allowed to carry guns in public, um, and except for uh, if if you have concealed weapons, you have to have state issued permits, and you can't take them to schools, jails, or bars. Hmm. Um, but so yeah, y- you know, you can and all, but uh, you know, I I don't know. It, it just I think it sends the wrong message, and and it's a distraction, and, and you just kind of say it. You, what, you, you can't leave it in the car, you know? Aren't you afraid it might go off accidentally? Yeah, but I, I, I kind of like this guy. Says, we're, we're, uh, this Ken Pagano. Pagano. Uh, we're just going to celebrate the upcoming theme of the birth of our nation. We're not ashamed there's a strong belief in God and firearms. Without this, that, this country wouldn't be here. Well, again, a lot of the leaders were, were deists. A couple of them were Jefferson was an atheist just about. <laughs> Um, you know, the guy who wrote the Second Amendment that said, you know, there's a right to bear arms. Uh, so I don't know. I 
again, this just strikes me those those, those things that just I don't know makes me feel a little creepy. I kind of remember you remember remember what was it the youth camp that you know they were giving away the AK forty seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, it's just this is the where you sort of mix American culture and Christianity, and you sort of blur the lines so much. This guy's not just blurring the line; he's completely stepping over it. This is an American culture thing. This has nothing to do with Christianity. All right. So, and I I could see if you wanted to do. I mean, you know, like okay, for instance, um, we have done a health fair here, where we had um, we had nurses come in and do like cholesterol screenings and stuff like that, and uh, and flu shots, and we had like. American Cancer Society and the Heart Association stuff like that were were there with boots and and that um you know which the stuff that they're doing isn't specifically biblical um it's i mean it's all about helping your neighbor and stuff and and you know you can argue some of this gun rights stuff um along some of those lines maybe um but it was it wasn't part of a worship service um we, you know, made a point of of making that completely separate. Now this is he's doing on a Saturday, uh, not a Sunday. So we're gonna assume that um, that he did it separately. But I just, you know, the church, the message of the church is is really it's about healing, and um, you know, and 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 loving your neighbor and stuff like that. And um, I don't know, I just guns. I, I'm not anti-gun. I mean, I most of my family hunts. I don't because I can't hit the broad side of a barn. But um, you know, I've gone hunting, and um, and I enjoy venison. But uh, I don't know. I just mixing it with church. It just it just seems like you know. If nothing else, it it kind of sends a negative message where people are going to look at this and go, "Really? I mean, is that what you're about?" I mean, looking at the story we j- where we were just talking about what is your message, what are you all about, you know? And this is really, it's getting kind of political. And you know what? People can get that at home. People can get that at a, at a political rally. They can get that at an NRA meeting. You know, what are you offering that's not uh, something that they can get elsewhere? So, Shotguns. <laughs> Handguns. How often can you get a raffle for a handgun? Huh? I mean, seriously. Yeah, hey, it's convenient because there's no waiting period then. That's right. Okay. Oh, uh, let's go to UCLA here. Okay. Um, okay. Speaking of speaking of amendments here. Um so um um UCLA had a uh person what was her name? Popa Christ- Christina Popa or Papa? Popa. Yeah, something like that. And uh she wanted to um speak at her she was at, uh she has some sort of speaking role at the UCLA graduation. And um she wanted to say um, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I also want to thank my, thank my father, who passed away three years ago, for teaching me always to do my best, and thus motivating me to pursue the sciences. I want to thank my mother for supporting me in school, as well as my sisters and brother for encouraging me, my friends for making college fun. I plan to work in a research lab or become a dietitian. And everyone was supposed to submit something like this. Okay, and the, so and it was supposed to be read off these these little snippets were to be read off by uh uh university faculty so but with the understanding that they're reading somebody else's stuff right yeah these are these are um the students' personal statements at the department's um so that it's a student it's the student's personal statement and they said up oh, you gotta drop out the, the my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ stuff and just put in God. Generic. Yep. Yeah, nice generic thing. So they said that, but then they they went back on it and they said they they did decide, yeah, okay, fine, we'll leave it in. But um, you know, jury's still out on how it ends up. But they um, 
It said, because the reading is by the university, not the students, to avoid the appearance that the university was advocating one religion over the other, guidelines were established so that messages would not include references to particular religions. Um, upon review and recognizing that the intent of the ceremony is for all students to have a chance to say something at graduation, the department will continue to, to make clear to the audience that the statements are the personal statements of each student and we'll read statements as originally submitted by the students. So that's how they, they turned around. They said, okay, well, we just got to make sure that people understand that this is coming from the student. And, and we'll sort of really emphasize that. And, uh, and and then it should be okay. So. Well, duh. Yeah. <laughs> that was the understanding for the beginning. You know, I, th sometimes the, the fact that now we've talked about, you know, valedictorian speeches and stuff like that. And, and what's appropriate and what's not and, you know, where can you sort of express your faith and, and where can't you? And, I mean, I think that it, where you're saying, I, you know, I'd like to thank these people, you know, for helping me through it. You know, I, it's a, you know, it's just sort of a priorities thing. Yeah, I want to thank God first and, and not just any old God. There's a specific God that I want to thank, you know, for, for being with me through this. And, and I don't, I mean, I think that's, that's a good thing. Um and, uh, you know, it's, it's not like she was saying, and I think that you should too, you know, or something like that. It's, it's just, it was just a, an expression of her personal faith. And, um, so yeah, it, this seems like they sort of overreacted because they didn't want to, oh, they're, we're so afraid that we're going to come across as, as being, um, you know, supporting a particular religion or something like that. You know, just, this is one of those common sense kind of deals where you just say, um, Really, is it, is it really going to come across that way when you're reading off and this person says, you know? Right. Yeah, very simple. Yeah, okay, guess what? This per, you know, this is, uh, you know, it, it, these are statements, student statements, not our statements, so go from there. So not that know, hard. These things just, they get blown out of proportion pretty easily. So... But at least be very happy. Why? Because if this was not um, UCLA, she might have to get an abortion. <laughs> this was a, 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 you know, this, you have to read the whole article here. Um, you know, the headline is abortions more frequent for private religious school students. Um, Journal of Health and Social Behavior. Uh, showed unwed pregnant teenagers and women in their 20s who attend or have graduated from private religious schools are more likely to have abortions than young women who go to public schools. So, you know, I, I heard that I thought, oh, is that because they're, um, because they're, you know, they're afraid that people are going to find out that they're pregnant and, you know, so they'll just, you know, sort of have an abortion to avoid the stigma and all, because there'd be a, you know, there'd definitely be a bigger stigma. Um, in a lot of those schools, you're going to get, um, you'll get kicked out if you're pregnant, you know, so I'll oh, just have an abortion so I can keep going to school or, you know, or something like that. And, and we've talked about some of that stuff, but then at the end of the article, it says that, Conservative Protestants, which includes evangelicals and fundamentalist Christians, were the least likely to report having an abortion, uh, less likely than mainline Protestants, Catholics, and women <laughs> with non-Christian religious affiliations. In other words, the ones who are conservative that attend, uh, you know, presumably pro-life schools. No, they're not the ones that are having the abortions. It's the ones that are attending the more, um, now Catholic, I wouldn't say necessarily liberal, but the, um, mainline Protestant churches and, you know, and, and their affiliated schools are, tend to be pretty, you know, pro choice. Like, here's the question. I mean, what, what, yeah, what is their definition of private religious school? Uh, I mean, first off, what age are they talking about? Are they, I mean, because they're, they're saying, you know, young is 14 and it's old as 26 at the time they discover they were pregnant. Okay, well, now we're, we're dealing with middle school, high school, and college. Yep. So, and where are these 
um, how old are they? I mean, that's that's one question, okay? Because um, I don't know too many mainline high schools, okay? I mean, yeah, there's there are some, and there are you know, there's the occasional the, the, the occasional pregnancy. We talked about the one girl who got pregnant at the one high school, um, you know, and they kicked her out, you know, after taking her down to talk to this pro life counselor, and you know, and you and I talked about, you know, this is a sad, sad thing for them to do. Um, <clears throat> but now, if they're talking about colleges, particularly, okay, but still, even if you're talking high school, you know, uh, back in Springfield, there was a Wiccan attending, you know, one of the Catholic high schools. We have found the witch, may we burn out? Yeah, no, that's you a know, good point. That just because you're attending that school doesn't mean that you agree with the teachings of that school. You know, but I mean, yeah, so, so, I mean, but it's a religious school. It was a Catholic high school. But I knew a lot of kids attending this Catholic high school that didn't believe anything. Um, and uh, I, I can think of a couple of Catholic high schools up here where you know they, they don't necessarily believe they believe Catholicism. Uh, a lot of them are, you know, a lot of a lot of them are escaping, you know, the Boston public schools uh, because while well, the girls might have abortions. There's a good chance you won't get beat up by a gang, you know. So, <laughs> you know, so it's it's there's there's other things that draw people there. Um, when you going to college, well, my goodness, um, probably uh, how many people know Boston University is a private religious school? It's owned by the Methodists. Uh, yeah. Boston College is a as a Catholic school. Not that I think you'd ever know it. Right. No, and, and, you know, for that matter, it also says includes those who have graduated from private religious schools. So, yeah, I went to, you know, I went to Catholic high school, but, you know, that was eight years ago. <laughs> you know? Right. I, I know I remember a situation, uh, my first church and, um, the girl I knew going to the local Lutheran high school, you know, and a week after graduation, moved in with her boyfriend. You know, something the school certainly didn't, wouldn't approve of or teach. I, I, I knew the faculty very well. I knew exactly what they would tell them was right and wrong. Mm-hmm. Right. Or you could, or you have, uh, like, a friend of mine who was attending uh, BYU. In fact, she was Mormon, but she told me about this, that um, they, the kids there, because, you know, no sex outside of marriage, they'd get married, have sex, and then have the marriage in all. <laughs> like within a couple days, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think you're kind of missing the point there. <laughs> We're in trouble. So, yeah. You know, I, I don't think it had, really has a whole lot to do with what school you attend. It has a lot more to do, you know, in my experience with the kids that I've dealt with, it's the parents. Right. Um, and there's no, there's no hundred percent. I mean, you can, you can be a parent that, you know, raises your kids right and, you know, talks to them all the time, speaks very openly and, and everything and, and really make a point of understand, making sure that they understand right and wrong and, and all that kind of stuff. And then. They mess up because you know what? We're all sinners and that happens. Um, mm -hmm. Or, you know, might be a situation where you have a parent who is you know, sort of free and loose or whatever. And, but the kid says, you know what? I, that, I don't think I like that. And, um, you know, and, and they don't go down that path. So, but you know, those tend to be the exceptions. Um, it, it happens. And, um, you know, and, and so, the parents can't always say, you know, where did I go wrong? Um, because, oh, well, your kid's a sinner and, you know, everybody makes mistakes and does things that they know better. Um, but definitely, uh, you know, the, the statistically, it just, you know, in my experience with the, the kids that I've uh, dealt with, uh, you know, boy, you can, you can just tell uh, based on the parents and, uh, you know, when you know, and I've got kids in confirmation class who, where the parents are living together and not married, and um, you know, and and the, and they and the kids flat out tell me, well, 
You know, my dad says that it's as long as you love the person, then it's okay. Well, you know what? I can talk till I'm blue in the face and I can throw all kinds of scripture at him and, you know, you name it. They're not going to care what I say because my dad tells me different. So, you know, and that, that doesn't just apply to sexual sin. That applies to just about everything. You know, kids, they get their worldview from their parents. And while they may not agree with everything that their parents say, that's the primary influence. So not mm-hmm. the schools. So, and, and parents need to recognize that too. You can't leave raising your kids up to the schools or, or the pastor for that matter. Cause there's, there's right. really it, very little that we can do. Right. And it's especially important on the, her fathers. Mm-hmm. Earlier yeah. you talked about, you know, men. Yeah. It's especially important. I am your father. Yeah, so. yeah, men have a much bigger, whether it be girls or boys, men have the the much bigger influence uh, statistically uh, on the on the kids than than the uh, mothers do. So dads, hey, you know, step up. You got a responsibility, and so uh, recognize that. And um, and and you know, part of that is is being honest with your kids when you mess up too and saying, you know what? I was wrong and asking your kids for forgiveness. Your father is. And that brings us to the end here. Um, if you got comments, thoughts, well, like we said, we're afraid we're not going to have a, a, another thing for about a month here, but we always are interested in your comments uh, at uh, podcast at crossfeednews.com. Uh, someone wrote to us on from last week. Uh, he left a comment on um, uh, YouTube, um, and I'm trying to figure out exactly what story this was in reference to. The best I can figure out, because I was wondering the same thing. We talked about Scientology, um, ah, Wikipedia yeah. censoring them. So it must have been a reference to this. This person says, I certainly believe in censoring anything related to any religion. I would hate for my kids to be exposed to religion without my supervision. Like pornography, graphic violence, and other ugly things available on the net, religion should be carefully monitored. Not such a strange idea considering the heinous history of the Christian church and its affiliated cults. I'm not saying religion is bad, just too many people use it badly. Now, um, you know, if you spend enough time on Wikipedia, you're going to be exposed to religion. So, um, you know, when you're talking about get, going online, uh, you know, that's just something that parents need to be watching their kids and, you know, either set up parental controls on the computers or uh, check their histories regularly or, you know, or something like that. Make sure that you know what they're doing, uh, that, you know, that's that's all there is to it when it comes to that. Uh, you know, as far as the heinous history of the Christian church and its affiliated cults, um, yeah, you know, we've been around for a long time. There's a lot of Christians. And so just statistically, you're going to have some problems. And, you know, there's definitely certain things in Christian history The you know, no one expected the Spanish Inquisition. Um, but, uh, you know, there've been certain things that we're not proud of that, you know, that at the same time, I won't claim responsibility for that stuff either because it was not scriptural. It, you know, there was just somebody as, as this person says, Bad people use it badly, you know, and and that happens, and it goes back to that whole deal mm-hmm. that we're sinners. Um, so, uh, appreciate the comment, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, just love hearing from people whether you agree with us or disagree with us. I, I think that the you know the I, I think I enjoy the comments where people disagree with us more so. Um, you know, that's not to say that if you agree with us that we don't want to hear from you. I uh, certainly do. Um, it's always nice to <laughs> to know that we're not, you know, completely out there. That you know somebody agrees with us. Um, but Gail likes snarling and arguing. I, I prefer the praise, folks. So you know, tell us you're <laughs> wonderful. I I never miss you. You're you're great. I need all the ego boosters I can get in life. Okay, so you know, he's got this new church, man. They just think he's you know walks on water. So you know, my church knows better at this stage after four years. So. Yeah, they they really don't know me yet. <laughs> so. But uh, anyway, be all that as may, we hope you have a very good week and most likely a very good month before we see you again. And uh, God watch over and bless you. 
Yep. And uh, and by the way, those who are watching the video, George sent us a picture. <laughs> I'll stick it in the end of it. Just keep in mind, this is from a, from a, a retired ELCA pastor. <laughs> so <laughs> it's uh, it's called Canada's View of Mount Rushmore. <laughs> So if you're watching the video, just uh, let's know. just say it is the end. Anyway, talk to you later, folks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Good night, everybody. God bless.